fitness problems. I'm just kidding. I'm just lazy. that I may have too many gym clothes. I only think this when I have to do laundry, not when I'm ordering new gym clothes. We're going to do this in an organized fashion. Leggings, other stuff. What I wanted to talk about for this video is when I first started trying to lose weight, so I'm 23 and I started trying to lose weight when I was like 16, six, 15, 16, so six years ago, let's say six years ago. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's like eight years ago. I can't count. But what I tried to do was cheat the system. So I was like, how can I do this in really fast, in a really fast way, minimal effort, and keep the weight off forever. And I was determined to make this happen. Sorry. It's like... Sorry. All right, so I was determined to make this happen. And so I found five things, or started doing five things that were really, 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 really bad. And I say really, 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 really bad just to stress to you that after doing this, I lost a lot of weight and I'm going to share them with you but then I gained it all back plus like 30 pounds when I turned 20 when I turned 18 when I started college prime time for like socializing I was hiding in my room because I didn't want anyone to see me because I thought I looked like a whale and first never let your weight determine your confidence secondly I'm a hypocrite because I let my weight determine my confidence so I'm going to now tell you the five things I did in the hope that you will not do them or if you decide to do them, you won't do them in an as extreme, as restrictive and as sad a way that I did it. And the reason I'm doing laundry while I'm talking to you is one, because I have hard, a hard time making eye contact with the camera, as you can tell, and two, because I believe in multitasking and trying to do everything all at once. So this is what you get to do, the real life of a fitness person is doing laundry all the time. Washing my gym clothes because I'm afraid they're going to like, I don't know, expire or dissolve or whatever it is they do when you don't wash them often enough and leave them in your hamper. Back to the point of this video. <laughs> Just keep rambling. Back to the point of this video, we're gonna talk about the five things. First up, eating basically nothing and obsessing about every little thing I eat. So I'm a big believer in knowing how much you're eating not overdoing it, not underdoing it, eating like the right amount for like your body, your situation. But I am strictly opposed to under eating under all circumstances because it can only lead to hell. And I don't say that lightly, I was in hell. I went from eating maybe like 2200 calories on average, maybe 23 to like 1200 or something. And they were like, exactly 1200 I assure you I calculated everything every piece of lettuce that went into my mouth every chocolate chip of every chocolate chip cookie that I let myself eat like once every two months all of it counted I was miserable every time we wanted to eat I think my family dreaded it because I started crying because I didn't know how many tablespoons of dressing were in the salad I ordered or how many teaspoons of oil were used to cook the chicken I ordered whatever it was I was insufferable, I don't know why anyone talked to me, and I was just always upset. Even if like I knew how much I'd eaten, I was so undernourished that I was like constantly tired and cranky, my skin was breaking out, my hair was like falling, it was frizzier than it is like right now, like this is pretty bad, but it was worse. And like I don't recommend. 
I understand that to lose weight, you need to be eating less than you're burning. This is true. But you're not supposed to go to such an extreme that your entire body breaks down and decides that life is really just not worth living, living anymore. I would sleep for like 12, 14 hours a day sometimes on the weekends because I had been overworking my body so much by making it do such hard workouts all the time. I would just run for miles and miles and miles trying to lose weight and it sucked. So don't do that. Number two, when I was done running my miles and miles and miles, I decided that I should start weight training. For me, weight training was very different than what it is now. Now I'm more balanced about it. I know what muscles I need to hit and when, what I want to work on. Back then, I was so afraid of becoming bigger that I decided that anything more than 10 pounds really just wasn't worth my time to lift because I couldn't afford to be bigger. Uh, I'm supposed to go to sleep according to my phone, so sorry. But I decided it wasn't worth my time. By the way, I love this shirt. Fun fact. And I gained no muscle, like none. Again, with the eye contact issue. No muscle because I literally would just do the same exercise forever with the same light weight and I was wasting my time. And part of the reason was because I was so exhausted from running like 10,000 miles, which basically ended up with me having like really, really, really developed quads and like really undeveloped every other muscle in my body. So I didn't really look that great either. So I was like spending hours a week running for no particular reason. I lost a lot of weight, but I didn't like look that great. So I don't know. I don't really know. High, high, high rep, low, low, low weight, no challenging to the muscle. I did it just to go through the movements. I was like, if I do 200 reps of a bicep curl, I'll have lean arms. I did not. I basically just lost a lot of mass on my arm, but they still look flabby. This is the stack of leggings, by the way. It's gonna just keep growing. And yeah, so I don't recommend that. I do recommend using weights in a better way and just hitting all your muscles two, maybe three times a week, depending on your goals, and going heavier so that you actually feel it and not mindlessly go through thousands of bicep curls for no reason. All right, thirdly, I decided that the best way to lose weight, as I mentioned, was cardio. So I would run, as I mentioned, and I would just keep running constantly, always, 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 always running. I was so sick of running by the end that I, when I, like went through my I can't do this anymore burned out phase I gained as I said maybe 60 pounds total so 30 more than what I had lost yeah 60 pounds total because I was not running like six plus miles a day and six is like my low balling I was running a lot I was like really good with the cardiovascular system but like it was too much on top of being very active in school I was constantly going up and down stairs in school. I was under eating. I was like, I was a hot mess. And also the cardio, I didn't do as many intervals. I just kind of kept going at a steady pace. So I really, my body, instead of burning fat during the middle of all of this, it just kind of stopped losing weight because it got accustomed to running that much and it expected me to run that much, so if I ever ran less, I could see myself retaining more water, retaining more fat, because I was just overdoing the cardio and made my body basically assume that I was going to run 10,000 miles for the rest of my life every week. Like, oh, here we go, don't topple. <laughs> this makes me really nervous. Yeah, so don't do that. Jumping jacks, high knees, all of those things I incorporate in my plan and my like any client that I have, I make them do it or ask them really, really nicely to do it. But I don't make them do it for hours on end like I did before because then it loses its purpose. So yeah, don't overdo it on cardio. It's a good thing to include, but like there's no need to be a marathoner if you're not a marathoner. The next thing I did was decide that my sleep really wasn't that crucial. So the reason on the weekends, another reason that I would sleep until basically 2 p.m., on a good day would be because I would wake up early to work out I would sleep late because I was so tired after school that I would nap and not do my homework so I'd have to stay up really really late to do my homework and I survived like this for like two years 
survive being like a really strong word for it. I was a terrible, terrible mess. No one wanted, I, I, I don't know why I still have friends from high school, TBH, because I, I was constantly like Dracula. I was a terrible person. And in that I was just always irritable. I was like a nice person who's always irritable. And yeah, so I would wake up super early because I would think I need to work out in the morning and then I would ruin my entire day, I would just ruin my sleep and it's not that waking up early and working out is a bad thing I still do that today a lot of the time but waking up early but and sleeping late will eventually hinder your progress because you need sleep to recover you need sleep for basic brain function you, I swear if I had gotten more sleep like I would have probably done a lot better on the SATs now that I think back to it shout out and yeah fun times the last thing that and this is kind of minor but the last thing I did that I wouldn't recommend to people but this does come with a caveat this is the most confusing one would be to sac I would not sacrifice relationships for the sake of working out but I say this with a caveat it is important to have people around you that support your goals that you want to be healthier that you want to be fitter and it is important to make decisions that are good for you. So if every night you have friends that want you to stay up until 3 a.m. doing absolutely nothing, and that is compromising on your ability to go to the gym consistently or compromising on your ability to just basically live your life the way you want to live your life, all by all means, don't meet them. Or hang out with them less or leave early, like that's fine. But what I'm saying is don't compromise on it to the extent where you just never see the people you care about. I would because I was so intent on making sure I never missed any single workout and I was working out seven days a week. I wasn't really taking rest days and so there were, I literally saved no time to see anyone that I cared about. I barely saw my family and I lived at home. So if there was a movie night, I'd say, no, I'm sorry, but I need to go run my like 100th mile for the week so I won't be able to make it. I apologize. When in reality, I probably should have gone to the movie because my friendships probably would have, would have been a lot stronger. I would have showed people that I do care about them. And truthfully, my body probably needed the rest now that I think about it. So make sure fitness is a part of your life and not your entire life. I am a very OCD type person. Well, and I'm trying not to be, but I was extensively when I was that age. And I would constantly, constantly give up things that or truthfully really important for your spiritual, mental, and emotional health for the sake of my physical health. Which really wasn't my physical health because I was really unhealthy. I look back at those pictures and like the there's nothing there. Like I I was like a shriveled up raisin, like and I wasn't even like lean. I had fat all over my body, but I had lost any ounce of muscle that I possessed except for my quads. So I was like very disproportioned. I wasn't really that attractive. I'm not saying I'm now, but I'm saying like back then, like it was, oh, it was worse. And yeah, I don't know what that is, but <sighs> learn from my mistakes. Make fitness a part of your life. Don't make it your entire life. And if there's someone who does not support your goals and is constantly asking you to go drinking at 2 a.m. and that's just not, not your situation and you need to wake up early and you want to make sure you're getting enough sleep and sleep like on time, then by all means, make that decision for you. But there's a balance that can be reached. There are times that I will not do certain things because I do prioritize working out. For example, I have not, I don't go out as late anymore or I will make sure I schedule meetings so that I don't have to compromise my me time at the gym or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, if someone really needs me and they are asking me to meet at a time what would usually be like a time that I'd be at the gym, if I can make a different time at the gym work, I will. Because people do matter. And I learned that the hard way by losing a lot of people. And I don't want you to do that. So those are my five tips um, interwoven with really random film footage that I took in my single room apartment that now looks really, really messed up because I moved all the furniture to film. And yeah, I'm almost done with my laundry. I can't find four of my socks. So you would think that I still have an even number of socks to work with, but they're all different colors and sizes, so we're just going to ignore that that's happening. I still haven't finished my laundry. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah. 
I was gonna make a joke about my leggings, but it's not really that funny. It's a serious cry for help, so I'm not gonna make the joke anymore. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you benefited in some way, shape, or form from my obsessively long rant and mono. Before I go, I wanted to show you just how I keep forgetting to do it from this angle. Before I go, I wanted to just show you how how do I hold it? <laughs> how dire the legging situation is. So those are the ones behind me. And these are the ones that I have to now sort through. This is an entire drawer for them. They don't all fit. And I'm, I'm really upset that some of these have to go bye-bye, but I guess you live and you learn. And what's upsetting to me is there is another legging launch from one of my favorite brands coming up. And I can't justify getting any more because they don't fit. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I can't even smile because of the freaking invisible. <laughs> Mama.